Let's talk about uh, the BBC and go straight over to from the Defund the BBC campaign, campaign director Rebecca Ryan. Uh, good evening, Rebecca, and a very happy new year to you. Happy New Year to you too, Kevin. Hope you had a good rest. I, I did, uh, but I'm back fighting <laughs> fighting fit and uh, ready for another row about the BBC. Uh, I Absolutely. mean, there's a lot going on at the Beeb as per usual, but they had a disastrous few days uh, on the Ghislaine Maxwell case. First of all, uh, when the verdict came in, uh, they ran an unchallenged interview with the American attorney, Alan Dershowitz, who's been around for a, for years. He was around when I was there in the 1990s. A very big name in American legal circum, circles. Uh, uh, and he said in this interview, uh, categorically, that Virginia Roberts had no right to sue Prince Andrew. Uh, what they failed to mention uh, was <laughs> that uh, Alan Dershowitz is one of the people that Virginia Roberts accused uh, of uh, improper sexual activity. Uh, they didn't mention that. They just said he was a respected civil uh, litigator. Uh, also, after the verdict, uh, they had Ian Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell's brother, on, I think, the Today programme on Radio 4, uh, giving this interview, basically just dismissing the verdict as absolute nonsense and all wrong and his sister was an innocent victim in a man's world this was misogyny uh they couldn't sentence epstein so they sentenced my sister again unchallenged i mean you can't really do that you cannot just take a court case and take some interested party stick them on the telly or the radio and get them to say well that guilty verdict was rubbish and uh, they've already apologised for the Alan Dershowitz interview. Uh, and frankly, I think they might have to apologise for the Ian Maxwell interview too. too. Why do so few people in BBC journalism uh, seem so incapable of basic editorial judgment? Well, I mean, there's two key points, I think, to this, uh, Kevin. There's one that's the, the really, like, as you've said, the really low level of journalism here of you know, checking out who the contributors are, or at least, you know, mentioning that and getting that up front in front of the audience so they've got a, an understanding of what, where people are coming from when they're making these claims. But also it's complete lack of self-awareness from the BBC um, on their, you know, how they are viewed by the British public on their historic uh, handling of sex scandals. You know, we get uh, complaint emails, you know, on a weekly basis from supporters of our campaign talking about the Jimmy Savile case, Stuart Hall, Ralph, Rolf Harris, and how the BBC handled have handled sex scandals and sort of given um, platforms to apologists for decades. And, you know, it, the BBC really should be aware of its, of its reputation on this kind of thing. So it's really, uh, really... Um, unwise of them to not have thoroughly checked and to have done due editorial process. Well, I mean, it's possible they didn't check Dershowitz uh, properly, uh, or mm. it's possible they knew and made a wrong call. I uh, yeah. just didn't think it was worth mentioning that uh, one of the people that uh, Virginia Roberts accused of sexually abusing her was one Alan Dershowitz. Now, yeah. of course, Alan Dershowitz uh, completely denies uh, these allegations uh, and has never been convicted or uh, got in any trouble about them. Uh, but it has. To, if you're going to interview this guy about the verdict on Ghislaine Maxwell, which has got everything to do with Virginia Roberts' case against Prince Andrew, then you should mention that. And they didn't. And they were so mortified by their own incompetence that they yes. uh, uncharacteristically issued an apology in about 24 hours flat. This was uh, the interview, by the way, was on the BBC News channel straight after the guilty verdict for Ghislaine Maxwell. Absolutely. So, you know, this is the, it was a prime time uh, coverage on both of these slip ups um, or, you know, low low quality uh practice that they've been doing there and and it, it, as you said the Dershowitz thing um they've apologized very quickly so they're clearly aware that they've made uh, a big error there by, okay, if i could just not... interrupt um yeah. rebecca this is what a bbc spokesman said uh last thursday on Dershowitz. uh Dershowitz was not mr Dershowitz was not a suit suitable person to interview as an impartial analyst we did not make the relevant background clear to our audience we will look into how this happened i mean you know it's this is basic stuff you wouldn't expect that kind of mistake to be made by a junior reporter on a local paper 
but they were in a habit of not of not making uh, public people's sort of biases on things, aren't they, when it suits them. So I think, you know, we see all the time left wing activists being um, being presented as, you know, uh, an, a nurse or a trade unionist or whatever. Um, but then when it's a cause that they that they feel strongly against, you know, if it was Brexit or something like that, they're, they're very thorough in their checking. So it, it's just it's a sort of tool that they use. Um, to push for particular gender, but, just, but it just makes you wonder why in this situation didn't they check it? Because they should have known, based on their reputation being so, so weak on the cover-up of sex scandals, that they should this should be in the forefront of their mind that they're doing, you know, completely towing the line as they should be. So let's move on to Ian Maxwell again, straight after the verdict, uh, or r relatively soon after the verdict. I think the next day on Radio 4's Today programme, the flagship radio show, news show of all of the BBC, uh, Mich Michelle uh, Hussein was interviewing Ian Maxwell, uh, who told uh, the listeners, uh, told uh, this uh, the, our esteemed state broadcaster, unchallenged, uh, these were Epstein's crimes. And he's not here to pay that price. And she has been made, referring to Ghislaine, uh, and she has been made to pay the price that he should have paid. My own view is that Ghislaine had nothing to do with it. Well, it would be his own view, wouldn't it? I mean, to, to be honest with you, that's ridiculous to get someone like that on uh, mm. to say, I don't agree with the verdict. But it's not even yeah. framed like that. It's no. him saying this verdict is a disgrace. Mm. He should have been challenged there and then. I know that they'd come back afterwards and sort of said, well, we had the next person on was, you know, had an opposing view. But as you say, it was framed completely incorrectly. Um, and it just really makes you wonder about the BBC's editorial process, how they let that get through, um, as you say, on a prime time slot. Uh, on a general basis, uh, in the Sunday Times or on the Sunday Times website on um, Sunday, uh, the Director General, Tim Davey, uh, sort of put forward this great big diatribe about how brilliant the BBC was and, uh, you know, his targets for this year. Uh, and one of the things he said, well, you know, we have to, uh, you know, maintain our reputation for impartial journalism. I mean, frankly, <laughs> frankly, this is perpetrating a fantasy. Uh, uh, not, not so long ago, there was a poll of a BBC mm. licence VP, it was the people of Britain, and 94% of the people polled said, uh, we do not trust the BBC to be impartial. We think the BBC is biased. And the reason they think that is quite clear. The BBC is dreadfully biased. Absolutely. And they, 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 they were found to be the least uh, trusted source out of all the big uh, national broadcasters. <laughs> it's as well. not surprising, and, is it? <laughs> And time and again in our polling, we see that people really don't trust them as being as being impartial at all. Um, so you just have to you have to think, that, but like you say, it's just sort of gaslighting on a, on a national scale. They know that there is an issue, and they should be honest that there is an issue. And then maybe the British public would actually think, okay, well maybe they will make a change. But there is, whilst uh, Tim Davy is gaslighting the you know the British public, there's no way that anybody gonna, is going to change their view about the BBC and decide to give them a second chance. You know, it's it's a, a very uh, good at covering its own back and um, presenting itself in in a certain way. I and mean, we saw one news story today, which is about the sort of how they're presenting. They've been spending their time putting together sort of collections of 100 pictures and 100 videos that come, you know, to celebrate 100 years of the BBC. Sure. Um, and they're <laughs> announcing this as a news story at the beginning of the year because that's <laughs> how they that's how they're going to flood, you know, the, the news over the whole, over the whole of 2022. Um, but they they didn't have the time to make new programs for you know Christmas audience. So um, you really have to wonder what their priorities are. But covering their backs is certainly top on the list. Yeah, uh, so Nadine Doris, the Culture Secretary, uh, is, this week is involved uh, in negotiations with the BBC because mm -hmm. the BBC wants to put its £159 licence fee up, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she apparently, uh, quite a feeble gesture, I think, but uh, at least a gesture, uh, wants to, at the very least, keep the BBC licence fee under the or the increase under the rate of inflation to send them a message. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you know, how much longer can they justify this? 159 quid. I've got to be fair, uh, over the festive period, I, 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 this is a first, 
I don't often watch telly these days. I used to have to watch it for a living. But I did watch uh, a couple of BBC dramas that uh, were sort of definitely non-political and were and were good. I thought um, a Very British Scandal was quite good. And uh, there's a new thing on with uh, Jamie Dorman called The Tourist, which is very, very good. So it reminds you the BBC, if they get rid of their silly political prejudices and their uselessness at journalism, uh, it can be a decent organisation. If they remembered that, we wouldn't have any objections to the, them putting the licence fee up, maybe. No, but I mean, what's shocking is that you can pick out two dramas there that you've, you've managed to find over the Christmas period on the BBC. And I'll that, be honest with you, Rebecca, they're the only ones I watched, but, you know, they were both exactly. quite good. <laughs> that's what I mean. I mean, they're, 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 it's really poor value for money, you know, because they're spending, charging double what, you know, the likes of Netflix and Amazon are charging. And you can find two dramas there. And yes, they do make the occasional good drama. But let's, you know, put it to the British people to decide whether they think it's value for money or not. And perhaps it's time for them to stop making all of this content that people really don't want to see. They don't want to be preached at. And, you know, make content like those two dramas that you watch, make more of that. And then maybe people will pay a subscription fee. And the, the, the solution is easy, isn't it? You know, by mm. all means, if you think the BBC service is worth £159 a year, great. Yeah. And if you want yeah. to put it up to £170 a year, great. Offer it to us, uh, yeah. but don't make us pay it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why we always say to our supporters that, you know, you can you can actually get away with not paying the TV license if you just stop watching all live TV. And actually, a lot of people don't watch live TV anymore anyway. If you switch over onto On Demand, so you're only watching Netflix and Amazon Prime and what have you, then um, you can you can get, get rid of paying the TV license yeah. fee and, you know, do your best to tell the BBC what you think of them. I was in company with uh, some friends who got an eight-year-old daughter and I asked her about, we were talking about the BBC. She'd never heard of it. <laughs> 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 They're in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. Rebecca, yeah. great to talk to you. Uh, we'll talk again too, soon. Kevin. Rebecca Ryan there from Defund the BBC.